I feel like BCS Theatre has become a brand of sorts. People have, <laughs> they have expectations. We have bring a spectacle to a small stage. When it came to selecting the fall drama, there's only one choice, really. It was gonna be Murder on the Orient Express. And to have a chance to perform one of Agatha Christie's greatest stories, I could not wait to tell the kids. Hello, folks, so that you too may yes! Guys, let me give you a simple explanation of Jitterbug Fundamentals. <laughs> The more I talked to them about it that night, the people just got so excited for a chance to do something different. This all started in the summer of 2019. My wife, Jamie, and I had kind of started talking about what if we did Murder on the Orient Express? So I got like a perusal script, went on vacation to Universal Studios. On the flight, we were reading through it and we were just kind of talking about ideas of what you could do with the stage. And I remember we ate at this restaurant called the Toothsome Chocolate Emporium and you walk in there and you're just kind of wowed by it. It's like completely steampunk themed and it's huge. We had kind of thought, what if we put like a layer of this kind of style of steampunk through it? And that was the dream. It was a brand new show on the market. You could license it uh, as of that year. But the problem was it was already up for grabs. It prevented us from getting the rights. It prevented us from doing the show. It all worked out because we went a different direction. I chose to do a comedy, News is Off, and it was a blessing. We were not supposed to do Murder on the Orient Express that year. Thankfully, we got the rights and we revealed it and people couldn't have been happier about it. You're gonna have to get used to this. This is my camera, it's for the video blogs. Doc documenting, I make a behind oh, the scenes. you don't know about the video blogs? No, I've seen everywhere. She lived under a rock. Yeah, I practically <laughs> have. <laughs> Hello, we're here at the read-through of Moto, no. Murder on the Orient Express. Very excited to be here. We're trying to Zoom call in uh, one of our cast members who is in India. Bonjour. Hello. Act your hearts out. I mean, that's what we're here to do tonight, so just have a blast, okay? As the Bible says, <laughs> if Moses doesn't know the answer, ask the concierge. <laughs> there was a man in my room. He ran off. I'm sure of it. Which way did he go? These are the facts. Say close. Say spinny. End of play. Everyone was just like, the script. I'm like, I know. <laughs> in the beginning of rehearsals, we had a lot of discussion about characters and I would I would challenge the cast members to go home and read their script and come back the next day having learned something new about their character we would we would open up discussions about it um, I would pose questions that they would have to answer I don't want you I don't want your cake you know what I mean take a pause there walk back at him I want nothing monsieur except to leave. Drew once pointed how different Poirot was to, say, Sherlock Holmes or Shirley Holmes. He's very good, bad, no in between. And over the course of the story, of course, it gets more gray and gray. But Sherlock Holmes is already like that. Plus, I'd also say, Poirot is a lot more charming. We're also known as Carter's Angels. Hi, camera. Carol, you should sing something. Ready? Yeah. Go. <laughs> One of the challenges that we came across was blocking for scenes that happen on a train. You feel free to move about as you wish, but then when you get on stage, you realize how much less space you have. And with this set design, we're creating less space on purpose. It's a train. There should be the awkward oh, let me squeeze by you kind of aspect of that blocking because you want it to feel claustrophobic. He was clearly shocked, which is why he did not fight back. What I think makes the mark of a great actor is someone who can take whatever, everything that's in the material and then add to it, fill in the blanks. So the more choices you can make about your character, the more ownership you have over it and the more it belongs to you. The other challenge that we had to get used to was zooming people into rehearsals. I mentioned the fact that we had one of our cast members who was still in India. It was a very interesting process to learn how to direct via you know, Zoom. 
Um, but we did get around it. We did figure it out. So Casey, you are gonna be somewhere over there. <laughs> Pretend I'm Mary. Oh my god! She's not in here! Try Ratchet's room! Mary! <laughs> push! Push her! I'm trying! Go! Go! I'm making up for all the times that I have not showed up for set day. I was about to say. <laughs> Look at Carter. Muscle man. Good job, Carter. We are clearing out storage in this barn. We're also clearing out the prop closet and gutting it for so it works better for our current show. And in the meantime, some dads are tinkering away at the most ambitious set we've ever done. Rocking the shorts. It wasn't too long into the process when I decided that what I really needed to make this possible was a rotating stage. It has been fun, it has been challenging. Yeah. But I've enjoyed it a lot. <laughs> you always says, oh, this one will be easier. It's always harder. I had never said this one would be easy. <laughs> never said this would be easy. Where we ended up landing was that we could achieve a 20 foot circle. This is pretty darn cool. There's one night for rehearsal where we moved to Ruth's room. Uh, there was some building happening, and it was kind of nice because we just kind of focused on our craft without that distraction in this room. And you know, we really got to the bare bones of like the heart of these characters and stuff. And we were doing our most emotional scene. Um, and then when we walked back into the gym, the stage was done. I mean, the, the rotating stage was done. Not the whole set, obviously, but the stage was done and like there was an eruption of like applause and hate. And it was just like, I can't believe we're doing this. I can't believe that we got this done. Like, this is ours. And it was so cool. We started incorporating everyone else into our rehearsals and went through the show like a second time but now incorporating uh, these different characters that we'll see along the way. Meanwhile, in the background with all these things happening, there are you know developments with costumes and you have to kind of like juggle those things in rehearsal because you know it's just the way a show works sometimes. You wish you had all the time in the world to do everything all the way, but sometimes you have to multitask. I brought in a new team member, uh, Hannah Bostic, who is my script supervisor. It's, it's, it's amazing how freeing and liberating it is to not have a script in my hands when I can just focus on the acting while she's keeping their lines straight. I know I've already asked for a montage of me doing this, but here's the start. <laughs> Yep. We have a lot of fun in rehearsal. In fact, I wish I had the time to have more fun with them during rehearsals. Unfortunately, I'm directing everyone else. <laughs> There was a idea that we should pull off a steampunk style. Doing my research and everything, it proved to be quite a challenge to pull that off. Um, the 1930s is where our story takes place. The style is art deco. Things change and that's part of the creative process. During fall break, I didn't want time to go to waste. I wanted to work on the set. So we met a few times to uh, paint, to build. a stencil for our beautiful walls right here. 
Um, I hope it looks okay. I wanted to go for wood paneling and um, I had seen this video online about how to do uh, a stain. Used foam board because that's what was used in the video. Turns out though, it's never ever, 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 ever going to dry. It was very discouraging because I had done this to 14 four by eight panels. This is like basically our entire set. It is Sunday, the last day of fall break, working on these walls. It has been a journey with these walls. It was actually a big thanks to Hannah Bradley who shared with me a wood grain technique that she had been learning in her one of her theater classes. And we took this wood grain brush and we started scraping it across and depending on how you rock it, you can get different shapes and everything and it lo looked convincing. I paint the border and then we set it up to dry and then after that it's going to go up on the wall and then we'll spray paint the gold stencil on. It's a process but the goal is after today to, oh my gosh! Carter tripped on the paint! <laughs> Carter, what have you done? <laughs> Incorporated our stage crew and getting Rachel back on board on the team was amazing. Just getting the crew to learn the show and getting the actors comfortable enough to run the show. But what was an exciting highlight for that week was getting the cast in costumes, hair, makeup, taking some photos. That night was so fun. It's okay. I knew Kelly before this. Me loves Carolyn. What, what do you think about reading my hair half and half? They're burning their hair! Okay, not try to help it. I can't. You can't open your eye. <laughs> Gosh, that's fabulous. Look at her, she's like, oh my god. Look more menacing. You're like, yay. <laughs> right there. Photoshop my teeth white, please. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, Nikki. Where's the pizza? <laughs> Let's go. Here we have the first ever Cam Cam. <laughs> Murder on the Orient Express is famous because of the great characters that are in it. What happens when there's a murder and you're stuck on a train and on board you happen to have this brilliant detective who is here to find them out. Good thing it's just foam. Give it! Yeah! We'll polish it up! <laughs> <laughs> I am so glad it's great. Oh man. Come on! Come on. Oh, we got it! Yeah! I was really proud of the work that we got done that day. I mean, the set was basically done. We're vibing. Hey, vibin'? things are coming together. We're finally getting there. It's just a moment where you, you, you get chills down your spine. You think, you know what? My vision became real. We had access to our lighting and sound because we bought it. We were already incorporating the tech into our rehearsals two weeks out rather than just the last week and work out a lot of the kinks. It, it allowed us to get crew involved a lot earlier. You know, every show has its challenge, but with this show, you have like 90 pages so of material that you have to master. It allowed us to be in a position where we were just, we were really prepared. I'm going back to see Carter with his mustache for the very first time. Should be fun. Yeah. Are we close? Or you? Of course you do. Okay, oh, this is the best bed ever. Night night. Night night day. Night, 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 night. Doing what I usually do, programming the lighting for the show. You're the star. It actually does look like a star is shining over my shoulder right now. It's supposed to say day wagon lits. Obviously it says wa on day lit. Welcome to Tech Week! Yeah. Hello, 
I'll tell you something, that Monday of Tech Week was the best Monday of Tech Week I've ever experienced. <laughs> um, every scene was just dynamite. It, the, the show of it all was running very, very smoothly. I got to just celebrate the kids' achievements. And like, you know, I told them like, guys, this doesn't happen. This is where, where you felt awkward at the beginning, where you were offering information in the middle. Now is where you, you know where you stand in this conversation. It's that I didn't lie. Basically, the breakdown of the show is that you have this very grand entrance. You're introducing all these characters, you're introducing the Orient Express, you're having all the, you know, you're establishing the rules of these relationships and how the dynamics are working. And then you have the murder. And from then, it's kind of like scene by scene, interrogation after interrogation, Poirot going through these characters. And that's when you really get to know them. And that's when you start to think, I wonder who did it. But it all correlates into what me, and the cast and the crew would just talk about scene five. Hey, crew back there? Yeah! Go ahead and kill all the sconces guys. was probably the hardest thing that we've ever done. The hardest thing that I've ever had to direct on stage. Not only do you have a lot of characters on stage, not only do you have a fight scene, not only do you have a series of intense flashbacks that have to be matched with actors and crew, perfect timing, perfect cues, perfect cues with the lighting, perfect cues with the sound, but it's also the most emotional scene that I've ever had to direct. Let us be. No, no, it is not that. But they would always, always end in tears. And that was just so powerful for us. And Poirot is just, his soul has been torn. And, and you know, and some of them lay a hand on him. You know, he, the, their fate rests in his hands, but yet they're showing compassion to him. He should lock them up. They, they should be evil people, but yet they have compassion for him. This is why Murder on the Orient Express is such an amazing story. Because it's why it's so famous. Because it, it really does make you ask questions. And Poirot lets everyone go. And it ends with a very sweet monologue from him. I still ask myself again and again, if this was justice, if what I did was right, there were nights during that tech week where Carter and I would just lock eyes and I would just cry and, and, it, and he would cry and we would end in an embrace. And we ended almost every single night of our tech week like that. Are you ready? Are you ready to get the stab wounds on? Cam, Cam, Jeremy. Ah. We have everything that everyone wants to see. We have blood, we have smoke, we have fire, we have gunshots, all in one day. Okay. We got a lot of fire and fire effects. We do. Like. Billy, so here, Bob, Joe. Billy, Bob, Joe. Me and Cam have to go through the door, through the door, right? We're going through the door, yeah? Yeah. It's a, it's a bit creaky, you know? Yeah. That's actually pretty yeah. good, Kim. Well done. This is called selfie mode. It's the new way we're doing the play. We're going online versions only. <laughs> Get your tickets, bcs.fun. And by the way, if you haven't liked the video or subscribed, like and subscribe. We got to Thursday, our dress rehearsal. You know, we had some audience members come in and you know, we just ran into a lot of obstacles. When the curtain opened, it tripped a cable. The front half of my lighting grid went out and I had no choice but to stop the show after that scene was over, get on a ladder and I climbed up there and I plugged it back in. On a couple occasions on the rotation, something clipped the wall and, and broke as well. There were a couple props that were missing. It was a watch! <laughs> He will not mention that from now on. Carter's mustache was falling off in the last scene and he was holding it like this during his impassionate monologue. I was still so proud of him. I was still so proud of all of them because they kept it together. Camera! Yeah. 
Okay, so camera, we're going around to all the cast members and asking them to do Drew impersonations. Guys, I'm trying to put on a show here. Can we be quiet, please? <laughs> that was That's actually pretty good. Uh, I will pull you back. You just go far. <laughs> I will pull you back. He finally sees that we've done really good. Drew's walking up to give you a hug. An impression of Drew? Okay, well, never mind. Hi, right, guys. Um, that was on our best friend, but it's fine. I love you anyway. Ooh. It is okay. <laughs> I have Damn, you're one. such a good actor. I really wish I could beat you someday. <laughs> <laughs> okay, opening night. Opening night. One crew trying to have been working hard and these people are ecstatic. For one hour, I'll meet you on the platform of the Orient Express. It is her cue. The name's Ratchet, Samuel Ratchet. And for that sport, I'm as a business team. Like, only pizza so it's easy to interest me. And frankly, you do not interest me. Exactly, Will you bring me those crisps, Mother? Awesome. Oh. Bill Bates! Bill Bates! He was the man in my room! He fell off, I'm sure of it! I think it's gonna be Casey Gladfinger's character. Okay. It's just off the wall, bold guess. We had an amazing turnout Friday night. We got a standing ovation. And I think all the kids really felt just utter pride. We get the concession team. Vlog, have you met Where's my Will? little sister Claire? <laughs> Favorite couple. She has. <laughs> To see my vision become reality was like the most special feeling. What you guys did out there was amazing. Was and amazing. everyone knew it. One, two, three. Orange Express! There's plenty of spectacle in Orient Express in the front half and the back half to be had for sure. But when you have all this space in the middle where you are just having characters and rooms talking, it is, that's the challenge. But yet, despite that, people are still coming up to me and saying, this is the best show that I have ever seen. This is the best high school show I have ever seen. Like, that that just, you know, you know that you have something special. Out of guys! Good! 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 Good. Woo! Was epic! Carter, I think it's time for some Hercule cam. Her Q Cam for uh, Carter. Hey. Oh, they didn't say it. They didn't say it. Okay, no, make that the text. Go Poro. Poro. Ah, go Poro. That is perfect. <laughs> Getting emotional. Oh, come here. It's not even. <laughs> All right, get a good shot. I had to talk about Carter. I was just kind of chilling in between the performances, and he gave me this letter. Carter's Angels. <laughs> and it sums up our journey of Moto perfectly. How we all jumped on the train together, but some of us, those seniors, they're getting off at the next station. Last mic check. Premier Meta. That's what this theater is. It's a train and some passengers have to get off early. Hello. Where could he go? <laughs> so unless the killer could fly, he must be one of you. <laughs> so good. You left your coat on the stage. Yes, dear Jesus, we pray for this mustache to stay on. You ready? Yeah. So I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, a giant thank you for making my dreams come true for just being so easy to work with and just making me feel like the luckiest director in ever because I love you all so much.
Thank you very much. We love you. We'll get that. With an accent. Okay. Yes. Yes. One, two, three. Together! People ask me often, like, Drew, what's your favorite show that you've done? All the shows I've done have been special for different reasons. Make up for me, you all! Murder on the Orient Express was the most fulfilling for me as a director because I felt like I, that was my best work represented on stage in terms of like the acting. It was the best acted show I think I've ever directed. And Act 2, Scene 5 was my favorite piece of theater that I've ever been a part of in my life. Um, I think people will remember how cool this show was. I think people will remember um, why the story is famous and the great twist of the, at the end. But if I want people who's watching, anyone who's watching this video, I want you to know that, that a show like this really brought a group of people together and made them family. Right. Fun. Emotional. But so fulfilling. <laughs>